Jordan, come on! Andy won't stop following me. I moved to a completely different city. And then he showed up. Uh, thank you guys for coming out of the show tonight. Uh, Love you, honey. I have, I've lived in Chicago for a few years now, and I do enjoy uh, some of the differences here and in, in, in between the South where I'm from. Uh, summer here is amazing. Uh, it does, it gets kind of hot, but you also, you get that nice, cool breeze in the summer here, like, <sighs> <laughs> you don't get that in the south. It's way, it's way too humid all the time. If there is any kind of a breeze going on, it's more like. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like grandpa breathing on you. <laughs> Only it doesn't smell like wild turkey and racism. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, that's what Memphis smells like. Yeah, totally. Um. <laughs> for, for the ladies here tonight, I have a really uh, important question. Uh, has this ever happened to any of you where you're just walking along, you know, a normal day and everything, and you fart, and then through some sort of anatomical marble madness sort of thing, you feel that fart travel up into your vagina? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fifth consecutive show on the road, I am the only woman brave enough to admit this. Thank you for letting me hang on this one, ladies. Uh, I'm going to take your complete non-committal as yes, Mary, that happens to us all the time. <laughs> and when it does, you just have that little service of like, whoa, whoa, get out of there. That doesn't belong there. <laughs> That's the same way I would feel if Mitt Romney were in the White House. Like, get out of there. <laughs> Look, a lot of people complain about Mitt Romney. Uh, one of their criticisms is that he is uh, too robotic. I say that he is not robotic enough. I'm not voting for a Republican unless you can assure me he's three laws safe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, there is a prize for geekiest reference of the night, right? Is that? Okay. Sweet. Uh, uh, now, I will say the one thing uh, that the Republicans do have going for them is I really feel like Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman show how far the women's movement has come. Like, I really do. You wouldn't expect it to come from the Republican Party, but I, I think that those two, they really do, because uh, if you guys remember, like, in the 70s and 80s, like, the women's movement, like, going really strong and everything, like, for a woman to get elected to public office anywhere, she had to be, like, really smart, and capable, but now a woman can be just as much of an incompetent liar as any man and get elected. We have overcome. Oh, equality is not always pretty. Um, they are uh, Michelle Bachman. Uh, she does have the crazy eyes. She really. She, and every man here knows the crazy eyes. And you're like, oh, I want it, but I don't need it, uh. It's like... <laughs> it's like she's trying to look behind your face. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah Palin, we all, you know, people have said too much, so all I'm gonna say about Sarah Palin is sometimes you have to call a spade a con. And, uh, I know that Sarah would be very upset that I called her a spade. All right. Um, I do. That. I, I, I pay uh, attention to poli politics a bit. Uh, 
because it's very healthcare is kind of my issue because I do I, I have uh, pre-existing conditions multiple um, and so the whole healthcare debate is very I'm very tuned into that and everything um, and one of one of the pre-existing conditions I have is I have asthma anybody else in the club yeah. Uh, that is that is as much as we can exert. <laughs> um, which uh, you know I've had it since I was a kid, and you know it's, I I figured out though how to make it work for me. You know how to incorporate it. You know when I'm spitting my game with a fella, uh, and just be like you know hitting on a dude like oh you're in a band that's really cool. <laughs> And that is how you get zero phone numbers. Uh, the other, the other pre-existing condition that I have is uh, I have Graves' disease, which you don't really need to know what that is. Like, uh, it's like the third thing they think the patient has on house. It's like that kind of thing. And uh, I was, I really. Uh, uh, Recently, uh, a few months ago, Missy Elliott came out and, and said that she has Graves' disease. That's why she hasn't really put out anything in a long time. And that made me really angry that it already had a name, because I would love to tell people that I've got Missy Elliott's disease. <laughs> it makes it sound way better. Um, but it was kind of, kind of like a housey kind of thing, because they didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh, I got a uh, chest tumor, which... You gotta get that taken care of. Um, you can't. You can't hang back on that. And uh, so they took it out. And usually when they do that kind of surgery, they go. They do the cut like right down the center. And uh, the my surgeon, he was a cool dude. He was like, you know, we want to make it, you know, less visible and everything. So I have a scar that goes all the way across from here to here, like across my chest. And so. Uh, when gentlemen see it for the first time in like a, a making out sort of situation, uh, I have fun with it. I have fun with it. Because uh, I don't tell them uh, beforehand. I don't tell them beforehand. And so it's a surprise. And they're like, oh, where did that come from? I always like to look down and I say one of two things. I look down and I, I either say, oh, this, I used to be a magician's assistant. <laughs> Or I whip out a pocket knife and say, how crazy do you want to get to <laughs> But, uh, let's see where we're in that. Oh, um, I do, uh, so I, I have to go to the doctor a lot because of all my, my medical stuff. And the last time I, I went to the, <laughs> to the doctor, he told me that I needed to lose 40 pounds. And I was like, fuck you. Um, <laughs> if you need to lose 40 pounds, you know, all right? I don't need to hear it. Uh, so I was like, whatever. But then uh, the next week, I went to my gynecologist. And he also told me that I needed to lose 40 pounds. And I was like, I have let myself go from every conceivable angle. <laughs> Where I was like, Mary, you gotta do something. Uh, the only form of physical activity I enjoy at all is dance. Uh, perhaps you can help me with that later. <laughs> you will earn your money because I am the worst dancer. I, a lot of people say that I'm the worst dancer. I'm terrible. I have proof that I am the worst dancer. Like uh, before, so since I won't dance in front of everybody, I had to buy uh, an Xbox 360 with Just Dance so I can dance in the comfort of my home. But if you've ever had to use an Xbox 360 with a Kinect, it gives you the little silver silhouette. And the unflattered, it looks like the T-1000 has let himself go every time I turn it on. Uh, but I, I can't dance in front of other people because there have been two instances in my life where black girls have tried to teach me how to dance. All right. 
and I've always been really excited, like, yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be like a bridge building moment, because, you know, back in the South, you know, it's still segregated, we, we hold on to traditions, and, uh, so I'm like, this is gonna be a really special moment, you know, people are gonna exchange ideas, we're gonna learn about each other, we're gonna bring the friend groups together, within five minutes, they have quit, <laughs> like, both times, so that is, I am such a bad dancer, it hurts race relations, <laughs> okay, because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank you very much. I'm Harry Jordan. No more dancers. Thank